um, been a minute, you know, not too much going on for the moment, been doing some video game stuff, posting some live video game stuff, but we got a review tonight, WWE Clash of Champions, every title on the line, a lot of shenanigans, especially with the 24-7 championship, so let's get right into it and talk about the Night of Champions. So the first match of the pre-show, actually, which was, um, good choice by them, you know, they... Originally, the pre-show match was supposed to be Zelina Vega versus Asuka, and in the beginning, I was perfectly fine with that because I was just like, let's be honest, Asuka's going to kill this poor girl, and if Asuka's going to kill Zelina Vega and the match probably isn't going to take that long, there's no reason to have the match on the card, and it just made more sense to have the squash match like you know, like be on the pre-show. Apparently... Maybe um pressure from um from from social media or maybe something different's gonna happen tonight. They they changed the plans or whatever. Um, we actually have a different pre-show match, and they ended up having the SmackDown tag team match, which was Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro versus the Lucha House Party. And then when I thought about, it, I was like, you know what? That actually does make better sense than than Vega and Asuka because like let's be flat out one hundred percent honest. Nobody gives a damn about Cesaro and Nakamura versus the Lucha House Party. So. I'm okay with that. So, so obviously, Zelina Vega and Oscar are going to be on the main card now. Um, there's really nothing to say here. Like the Lucha House Party, they've been going through like their little arguing and like their their breakup teasing. None of that happened tonight. They had a regular tag match. They didn't even fight with each other when it was over with. You know, Shizaro, Shiz- <laughs> Shinsuke Nakamura, and Cesaro. They pinned Kalisto. One, two, three. We all knew they were going to retain the championships. So the first match of the night, Night of Champions, goes to the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura. So the first match for the show, the opening show, was the Intercontinental Ladder Match. Sami Zayn, AJ Styles, and Jeff Hardy. And Sami Zayn was by far the MVP of this entire matchup. They did a lot of crazy spots during the match. Like, there was one time where AJ Styles went for the phenomenal forearm, and Jeff threw the ladder into him to stop him from doing the phenomenal forearm. They had a moment where Jeff had um, Sami Zayn laid out on top of a ladder that was on the um, the ring apron and the announce table. He did a swanton bomb um, through um, Sami Zayn. From, and he it was like one of those tall ladders, like like the highest ladder you know that you could possibly find. And I was very surprised when um when Sammy got up later on because I thought Sammy was done after that. But then this fool, Sammy Zane, <laughs> Sammy Zane does this thing where he ended up like like later on in the match he ended up pulling out two pairs of handcuffs. He took one pair of handcuffs and he handcuffed. He put one end inside Jeff Hardy's earlobe because you know Jeff Hardy has like those earlobe those earlobe stretch rings he put one handcuff in there and then he cuffed the other one to a ladder so this way if Jeff Hardy tries to move he could potentially like rip his ear apart and then he took the other handcuff the other pair of handcuffs he cuffed AJ Styles with it and he was going to cuff AJ to the ring but then AJ Styles ended up fighting back and then he knocked um he knocked Sami Zayn out but he still had the, um, you know, the handcuff on his wrist. So AJ Styles went for a suplex on Sami Zayn, and while he was in the middle of trying to suplex him, Sami Zayn took the other end of the handcuffs and put them on himself. So now that Sami Zayn is like laid out, you know, he's like knocked out or whatever, and he's handcuffed to AJ Styles. Styles can't climb the ladder now because he has to pull Sami Zayn's dead weight. And I thought that was like completely awesome. He had. Then AJ ended up putting Sammy on his shoulders, and AJ tried to climb the ladder with Sammy on his shoulders, you know, so he can he can get up there and grab the titles. So then Jeff ends up putting the ladder on his shoulder. Jeff gets back into the ring. He takes the ladder while it's still handcuffed to his ear and starts banging it against AJ Styles. While Styles and Hardy are fighting each other, Sammy Zayn then takes a pair. Of, he takes the key. He uncuffs himself. <laughs> He ends up, you know, he, he ends up taking the handcuffs. Once he uncuffs himself, he takes the handcuffs, put the other end on, cuffed it to the big ladder. So now Jeff's got one ladder attached to his ear, and Styles is cuffed to the other ladder. And then this fool just climbed the ladder, ripped down both belts, and Sami Zayn is new and still your Intercontinental Champion, and that was awesome. So I guess now going forward, we're probably gonna have um a Jeff Hardy. Sami Zayn program, seeing as how Sami Zayn, um, seeing as how Jeff Hardy was considered the official Intercontinental Champion, and then AJ Styles, he gonna go do something else. I don't know what AJ gonna do now, but 
I don't see him being involved in the mix anymore. Sami Zayn. So Sami Zayn picks, basically picks up where he left off from WrestleMania, and he's still our and new Intercontinental Champion. Uh, our truth lost the 24-7 championship to um, Drew Gulag in what I'm sure is going to be many title changes to come, and our troops probably going to get the belt back at the end of the night. After that, we have uh, the women's, the Raw Women's Championship match, the, the match that was originally on the pre-show, and then made its way onto the main show, which I'm going to assume was due to social media backlash. Zelina Vega versus Asuka, and God bless Zelina Vega's heart, like, this girl tried. Like, she, <laughs> she tried. She, the match lasted a lot longer than I thought it should have. You can even tell Zelina Vega was, has been working with Kalisto, you know, like, on some wrestling moves, because even when, when, um, when Asuka went for the pin, when, um, when Zelina Vega, she rolled through and did that kick to the head that was something that Kalisto does a lot so the girl like she she you know she 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 had a good plan like she had a good game plan like she tried they did a good job of making Zelina not look like a total fool you know because everybody was just like oh this is gonna be a squash match and it wasn't a squash but we all knew she wasn't gonna win but good effort for Zelina Vega Asuka retains the Raw Women's Championship and after the match was over however they, you know, they interviewed Asuka, you know, she was just like, no, he's ready for Asuka, blah, blah, blah. But then, um, Asuka did, a, Asuka did a cool thing. She actually, she went to, like, Zelina Vega was still in the ring, like, trying to pick up her face. And Asuka tried to, um, you know, she extended the hand of friendship. Like, she extended the hand of, um, you know, of, uh, you know, like, you know, good sportsmanship. Uh, Zelina Vega, she, she countered that, because, like, when Asuka stuck her hand out, Zelina Vega, she was like, no, I'm not gonna shake your hand. Instead, Zelina Vega put both hands together, and then she bowed in Japanese respect to Asuka. You know, and that was touching. I was like, is this a Zelina Vega face turn? And then, you know, when Asuka bowed, you know, tried to bow in, in, in return, then Zelina kicked Asuka in the face, and that <laughs> started beating on her, and I was like, oh, here we go. So, I guess this feud is not over yet, but there's no reason why Zelina should get a rematch because she didn't win. And like I said before, it's Bianca's championship to win now. So we need that Bianca versus, you know, Asuka match like as soon as possible. Next business picked up hurt business that is the almighty Bobby Lashley versus Apollo Crews with Ricochet in his corner, MVP in Bobby Lashley's corner, Shelton Benjamin came out but then he went in the back, his services weren't needed because Apollo Crews is light work according to Bobby Lashley and I like Apollo Crews but bro like you going up against the almighty Apollo put up a good fight but got put down just like everybody else the hurt lock in full effect and Bobby Lashley is still the United States champion and the hurt business is still booming uh, the Raw Tag Team Championships, Garza and Andrade with their 17th title match against the Street Profits for the Raw Tag Team Championships. And this time without Zelina Vega in their corner because that whole thing just split up now. They actually did good. Um, the two of them did work well together for the most part. But um, in a controversial finish because Dawkins came off, um, at, I believe Zoc Dawkins came off with the splash, he got, um, he got the pin. And when he got the pin, it looked like Garza had kicked out, but... It, I guess the referee said his shoulders were still down, and the Street Profits ended up winning the tag team match, which I hope, which which I hope doesn't mean now, because they're gonna like tomorrow on Raw, they're gonna be like, yo, I got these shoulders up, I got these shoulders, and then we're gonna have match number nineteen <laughs> for the Raw Tag Team Championships. But the Street Profits are still the Raw Tag Team Champions. So then we had the SmackDown Women's Championship match. It was supposed to be Bayley versus Nikki Cross. And I don't know if Nikki caught COVID. She got injured. I know she wasn't on SmackDown Friday. And everybody was saying that she might not be here Sunday. And then it turns out that was correct. She was not here on Sunday. As far as I know, we didn't get an actual official, <laughs> you know, like, explanation as to why she didn't show up. So... They had Asuka come out for a second time. She wrestled Sasha for, like, three minutes. And then, I mean, not Sasha. She wrestled Bailey for, like, three minutes. Bailey got herself disqualified, and she retained the title. And then after Bailey retained the title, Sasha showed up, you know, still with, it, still with the neck brace on. I'm glad she did that. I'm glad Sasha's still wearing the neck brace because after everything that she went through, it would not be realistic if she just showed up perfectly fine, bouncing around like nothing ever happened. So she shows up with the neck brace, she waffled Bailey with a chair, proceeded to whoop Bailey's ass with a chair, and then Bailey ran away. So, 
the Nikki Cross thing is over with now. Whatever happened to Nikki Cross, whatever the situation was, she's not getting a second chance. So Nikki's dead. <laughs> hey, Nikki done. We're moving on to Sasha Banks and Bailey now, and that's going to be the feud going forward. Me personally, instead of having Asuka come out for a second time, I would have brought out like a different girl, like a new girl that they were trying to bring up to the main roster. Like, for instance, as an example, I would have had Bianca Belair come out and wrestle Bailey, so at least then you can showcase Bianca Belair on a on a big pay per view stage. People can see what she's all about, and then Bailey can still get herself disqualified. Bianca can win by disqualification. It makes Bianca look strong going back to Raw, and Bailey gets to save her title. I wasn't really a fan of the whole Oscar thing, but I guess they were like, "Well, she's she's already here in the building, so why not?" So again, but um, like I said, but the Nikki situation is over with, and I guess we're going full throttle Sasha versus Bailey right now. You know, I just realized. They did not do the women's tag match. <laughs> and I was actually looking forward to that match. It was supposed to be the Riot Squad versus Baszler and Nia Jax. And we just did not have the match. I don't know why. That was some bullshit. They said every title. Every title means every title. So unless somebody's injured, sick, or got COVID, if they just decided not to do it, that's jacked up. Um... Yeah, but I guess we'll find out what happened with that as um, the days and hours, you know, move along. Then we had the WWE Heavyweight Championship match, Drew McIntyre versus Randy Orton. And because their match didn't main event the show, I knew Randy Orton wasn't going to win. And thank goodness, it's nothing against Randy. I like Randy, but I feel like when Drew McIntyre loses the belt, he should lose the belt to Bobby Lashley and the Hurt Business. Um... The funny thing about this match, because it was an ambulance match, you got to put your opponent through an ambulance. Basically, everybody and their mama didn't show up. Like everybody that Randy Orton shit it on for like the last couple of months, like they showed up. Like like Big Show showed up, um, Shawn Michaels showed up, Ric Flair was sh- Ric Flair showed up. Like people, like um, people Randy Orton fought ten years ago, they showed up. Like Randy Orton basically got beat by like the locker room. And <laughs> the funny thing about it is. It put Drew McIntyre in a funny position because they're like, oh, Drew, Drew has the he has the jaw issue. He has like the separated jaw, whatever. But I'm just like, I understand he has a separated jaw, but you're making it look like he can't beat Randy Orton without help from all these other people. I mean, because he beat Orton with a backslide at um at SummerSlam. And now like and now it, it take like it took all this help and all this assistance. But I'm not going to like it was like I said, I, I'm not a fan of that for as far as Drew is concerned. But I'm going to let that slide because in the end, Orton did not win the match, which I was happy with. And for the love of God, please let the next challenger, the person who takes the belt from Drew McIntyre, please let it be Bobby Lashley. And finally, the last match of the night, Roman Reigns versus Jey Uso for the Blue Universal Championship. Oh, R-Truth got the 24-7 title back, by the way. And (laughs) this match went exactly how we thought it was going to go. Jey Uso got his ass beat like the rent was due. And <laughs> he got a little bit of offense, but it came it came down to the end where Roman was on top of him, beating the tar out of him. And he was saying that he wanted him to acknowledge him as like the head of the family and the tribal chief. And, you know, Jay wouldn't say the words. He wanted him to say the words. So then Jimmy comes limping his ass out because you know, he tore up his knee, like, around, like, WrestleMania time. So he comes limping out. And, and then, you know, he's got a towel in his hand. He's telling his brother. He's just like, yo. He's like, yo, he ain't worth it. I'm going to throw in the towel. And then, you know, and then, you know, Jay was like, don't do it. Don't, don't, don't give this fool the satisfaction. So then Roman starts, like, pounding him and pounding him and pounding him. And the whole time he's pounding him, I'm like, like, bro, throw in the damn towel. <laughs> so he finally throws in the towel, and he climbs on top of his brother to protect him, and Roman Reigns ends up holding the gold high, and that's how the show ended. So, um, <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty good pay-per-view. Like, it was a good, it was a quick, it was honestly a quick pay-per-view, because with the exception of, like, the Asuka match, and I think maybe, like, one other match, nothing, there was no, like, after match shenanigans it was more like the match well the sasha match the 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 bailey um match as well but but with the exception of those two matches every match was more like you had the match the match was over and then like that was it like there was no like there was no shenanigans there was no afterward stuff it was just like like mofos got beat (laughs) and then and then we move it on um so yeah so i would i mean overall i would give the show i would give the show like a seven seven and a half you know 
no um no titles changed hands. Well, I, I mean, if, you know, if you want to count the Sami Zayn, <laughs> like no titles really changed hands. I mean, I'm just glad the show ended before eleven o'clock, so that was good. So that was it. Um, that was <laughs> Clash of Champions. Like I said, decent pay per view. It's a very good pay per view. Um, a lot of good wrestling, a lot of good action, and we'll check out how all these feuds unfold on the shows to come. No retribution tonight, so I guess they're trying to like decide what they want to do with that whole thing as well. Thank you for tuning in. Leave a comment, like, and or subscribe. Check me out on Twitter, on Instagram. Watch my other videos, my other reaction videos, my, my video game stuff. Leave a comment. You know, let me know what you think about the show. Let me know what grade you give it. And until next time, for the pay-per-view, WWE, Clash of Champions, I love this bitch.